Welcome along to CJS Racing. Today we are getting two SMCRs mapped. We've got my Euro 4 bike, which has a Rottweiler airbox, full techno system. It's running a Power Commander with a generic off-the-shelf map, so not a custom tune. And we've also got Greg's Euro 5 bike. Yeah, so mine's completely stock from a fueling point of view. I've got a DNA Stage 2 air filter and uh, an NCAN pipe. So if you're interested in some mapping of these wonderful 690s, stick around, grab yourself a cuppa and chopsy, roll the intro. Got Greg's bike up onto the dyno. For, so I guess first thing, Chris, just a quick base run, see, see how it's running, benchmark. Yeah, that's it. First of all, we'll read the ECU. Right, okay. <laughs> for ECU read. Yeah. Brilliant. And then we'll do a couple of uh, a couple of benchmarks yeah. and see what's happening. Yeah, fantastic. So Greg's got the DNA stage two air filter, the arrow end can, um, obviously you're a five. Mine's got the Rottweiler airbox with the full Tecmo system. So it'd be quite interesting to see the difference, wouldn't it, compared. So what Chris does is he actually alters the hex value directly on the ECU. So he doesn't use a program like Woolage, which sits on top of it as an interface. He actually manipulates the data in its raw format um, once it's exported from the ECU. That'd be a fair, a fair description, yeah, Chris. Yeah, that is, that is correct. I've done this a few times with him now. According to the KES3, it's about 11 minutes. I want to read all the data. To read from the data. How come it's so slow? Is that just is that due to the throughput, or is that the amount of data on there? Is it? Is that yeah, the I guess the amount of uh, the amount of data on there and, and the actual speed capability yeah. of the ECU itself. Yeah. Some ECUs are painfully it's painfully slow. Are they? Some are ex extremely quick. Is that average in sort of eleven minutes? Would you That's say? That's quite good, really. So is two it? hours for some, did you? Two hours. Yeah. On a, yeah. yeah. Some bikes like um, Honda CBRs, the old really? ones, they can be up to a two-hour <laughs> retard. <laughs> Yeah, that is ridiculous. You spend more time drinking coffee than actually <laughs> doing, doing any work. Anything. Yeah, time for a coffee. Shall I get the kettle on? Yes, get the kettle on. Put the donuts. So, so with yours, you you hate it, don't you? You you I hate, it. You hate yeah. it. So the biggest problem with mine now is well, it makes hardly any power compared to my seven hundred one before. Yeah. But the biggest problem is when you're running it around town. Small throttle movements, bottom end of the rev range, it cuts out. It's so lean, it stutters, and it really yeah. is. It's actually quite dangerous putting out. You have to sort of slip the clutch and give it loads of revs. Just to play out junctions and stuff. And just talking to Chris, yeah. he was saying that basically it's under 60% throttle on the Euro 5s. They are, I think he said 15%. They're so lean, aren't they? Yeah, 15, 15 to 1. So 15 any, to 15 any, to 1. anything below 60% throttle, it's using the Lambda. So it's closed loop with the Lambda, which is keeping it at 15% fuel ratio it should be about ideally on 12 and a half or something like yeah. that for best performance yeah. but because of emissions to keep the cat warm they've got that's right they've got to keep the actual cat warm yeah. so if the cat cools down it doesn't, it doesn't work it doesn't properly work. so they have to basically run them lean to make sure the cat stays hot exactly and that's the reason that they're so desperately lean at the bottom yeah. so hopefully later fingers crossed chris actually thought my tea, tea was a little bit lean as well <laughs> Not robbing my tea, Chris. That's how you should have it. I'm going to convert people to milky tea. We're going to drill the exhaust, fit a rib nut, and take our exhaust gas sample uh, from, you know, as close to the header as possible. So you can't use the standard lambda position because it, it's in on the bike. There's not enough room to fit the wide band in, is there? We could do. You know, if the if the lambda if the stock lambda was uh, deactivated permanently, we could take it out and oh, uh, we you could need, use you an adapter it, yeah. to. Uh, the wide band is an M18, so we would need a M18 to M14 adapter, which we do have. Uh, but there's physically just not enough space to get it in. It would ah, need to okay. be this long. Yeah, yeah. There's no way we're going to get that in there. Get in there, no. And if you go to the tailpipe, you get some misreadings, you were saying, on potentially... Yeah, you get false leans. You get false leans. False leans at the tail. So you'll, you'll run the bike, and um, it'll give you a mixture of reading of about 18 to, to 1. And it's quite misleading because you think, oh no, the bike's 18 to 1, let's put 30% fuel on it to fix it. Uh, but in reality, if the air fuel ratio was 18 to 1, the bike wouldn't accelerate. Yeah. Anything over about 16 to 1, the bike will not accelerate. Oh, really? 
So, you know, you have to be aware of false leads. So it's going to put a little, little hole in the exhaust just so we can get the lambda in. There you are. And that's it. So we've put some paint on the twist grip. We've got 12, 25, 50, 75 and 100. This is the crude way of doing it, but the crudely accurate way of doing it. So with modern ride by wire bikes, if you ask for 50 at the twist grip, you may not get 50 at the engine. Yeah. One way to uh, quantify that is to look at one of the ride by wire tables. So we've got twist grip at the top, engine speed, and then the Z axis for the map is uh, throttle position at the engine. So if we look at our twist grip mark uh, 50, it would approximately be that area there. You can see that we don't actually get 50, we get oh. 43 at the engine. Oh, really? And then when we make a 25% throttle run on the twist grip, the one that we painted, we don't actually get 25%, we get 10. Because what, why do they do that? Just so it's not as snappy, just to make it a bit softer? Yeah, or? to tailor the, the characteristic of the bike. You know, we, yeah. could, we could make this a one-to-one -one throttle. So um, at our 50, we could change, that to, change that to 50. And, you know, this one would, it would, yeah. it would match the axes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the throttle would be one-to-one. -one. And what we ask for on the twist grip will be delivered at the engine. That's what you want, yeah. Is that what you're going to do, Chris? Is that all you're not... Will you leave it as is? Uh, I don't know. I guess we'd have to discuss that. Okay, no, that's fine. Okay. Did you did you want? Is it something you modify for many customers or not? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Okay. It it would be like riding a cable operated bike. Yeah. If you ask for fifty percent, yeah. well, you uh, get yeah, fifty exactly, percent. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Looks like Bane, a like Batman. So, uh, like I said before, there's an area which is a closed loop zone. Yeah. And uh, the area on this model is 0 to 60% uh, throttle. throttle. Yeah. So anything under 50 or 60 on the twist grip uh, will be partially trimmed by the Lambda sensor. So if we have a look at uh, 50, 50% 50 on the twist grip, you can see that the air fuel yeah, is, is, is set at Lambda 1. Yeah. Uh, if we look at uh, 12, part throttle. Again, it's running at Lambda 1, 15 to 1, and 14, that, 7 to 1, whatever yeah. you want to call it. And that's to keep the cat hot to make it more efficient at burning off yeah, sure. the, the hydrocarbons or whatever. And then if we look at full throttle, yeah. uh, you should never look at the first few runs at full throttle yeah. uh, with a cold tyre. So I see. Uh, typical dyno operator trick, they tune your bike and they will give you the very first dyno oh, run. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because it looks best. So it will, will spin that so it loses power, is it? Yeah, so yeah. If, you, if you look at this run there, you can see that we, we had some wheel spin here. Yeah. yeah. And usually with a cold tyre, and you know, cold oil temp. The bike generally makes less power, so yeah. the final tuned version will always be printed up against the first full power run. Yeah. So we want to be fairly genuine on this, and this was the fourth full power run. Yeah, that's 60, 67, 67, 67 points. Yeah, 67 points. 67 point. horsepower, yeah. and the the air fuel at the top end is great. You know, 12 and a half. Yeah. So would you say that was safe to run like that? Obviously it's not ideal with that massive, you're still gonna have all the issues of bottom end leanness, but if someone were just to put the DNA filter on, would you say that was safe, that's not gonna blow your engine out? Or? If we were lean at and above the torque peak, yeah. then it would be a different case scenario. Yeah, but it seems okay at the top. Yeah, at the top end, the yeah. air fuel mixture is great. Okay. The rest of it's not ideal, yeah. absolutely not, but it's not going to melt your bike. Yeah. 
because there's no, there's no torque being produced. So Chris is going to now use the map he's done from a previous, previous 701 Euro 5 bike to yeah. load back into Greg's ECU um, to see where we get it as a, as a base starting point, if you like. Yeah, so we're starting to write to the ECU now. This is where it's a little bit nervous in case it, anything happens or this is in progress. Stop juicing it, John, or <laughs> cancel the video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Christ, that'd get a lot of hits, wouldn't it? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Bricked ECU. <laughs> Do not flash your KTM. Unfortunately, bricking ECUs happens to everyone at least once or twice in a lifetime. Does it? How many times has it happened to you? Oh, hundreds. Only once, he says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, a lot of time. But you, um, you just have to know how to fix them and restore them. Right. Uh, it's the Hondas I don't like. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that a particular make of ECU they use then, is it? Or I don't know. I think apparently it's something to do with the reflash protocol. It's slow, oh. it's K-line, it's old. I see. And if the checksum's not correct on flashing, the ECU just turns into a brick. Uh, Door stop. Lovely. But for Honda ECUs, uh, Gary Donahue, Dan Gary Donahue in Moto Tune in Ireland, he's very good at restoring them. Uh, okay. So yeah, just post your ECU. So there is him. a way back then. Yeah. If, it, if, if you brick your Honda ECU, post your ECU to him. It fix it. Do you want another cup or anything? Or should not mess with the electricity? Yeah. Not mess the voltage. Yeah, don't mess the voltage <laughs> in the whole building. Don't make it I'm probably going to fill my lungs with nicotine. Okay. Okay then. And it has to do oh, and that's it. Right, so it's switched itself back on. So the bike now has the map from which Chris has already done from the 701 as a base map loaded onto ECU. So now another power one then Chris I guess see how she Yeah, so we we'll repeat uh, we we'll repeat 12, 25, 50, 75 and 100. We we'll repeat those runs. Yeah. Uh, obviously it's not going to be perfect, so we will have to make some adjustments and reflash again. Yeah, just the tweaks. So there's a fair bit of work to do. Is there? I thought it looked. Uh, there is. Yeah. So the 701, uh, it was tuned. Um, that just had a slip on. It didn't yeah. have this beast right. of an airbox. Right. So we need a lot more fuel. Okay. At yeah. lower revs. Yeah. So. Uh, it was a stock air filter, was it? So it wasn't yeah, air. stock air filter. Yeah, just pressure. a slip on. Yeah. So um, yeah, good. we need to fix up the mapping. Yep. We need to add some fuel. So ideally on that bottom row, you want that line in between the two, don't you? Between the red and the yeah. green line, you want that so you can see it's, it's still lean. And that should bump the, the low and mid, mid range power up quite yeah. significantly. Okay, back, back to the number crunching then. That's it. So here's my dirty girl. So she's got rather filthy on the ride up this morning because we thought we'd ride him up. I was going to trade him, but couldn't be, couldn't be guffed with all the hassle. So we rode him up, found some nice roads. So uh, it'll be nice to get this thing on the dyno finally and see how it runs. What we got here? <laughs> oh, he didn't like my tea. There's What's the matter with him? He doesn't like it. This is not on another one of yours. This is no he fact. says, can Greg make this? Did he? Did he really? No, he didn't. <laughs> does he want one? Yeah, he does strong, yeah, a strong yeah, one, strong he says. The problem is, I'll tell you what the issue is, it's actually full fat milk and not semi skimmed, you see. So that's why it wasn't, he didn't quite like it. I'm sure if we had semi skimmed, he would have liked semi -skimmed. it. Do you? I never drink semi skimmed. Oh, really? You're full fat? Always. Full fat. I like milky tea, creamy cereal. I'm all right, fat. Well, I, I, I like semi skimmed, but then add a little bit of double cream to your cereal. <laughs> But I, like, I, like, I like semi skimmed in tea though. I think it's too creamy. Oh, no. Too no, creamy no, with. Uh, no, no. But cereal. Ignore yeah. this consumer advice. He's talking nonsense. Cereal, a little bit of. Do your semi skimmed and then put a little bit of double cream on top. A bit of gold top and then a bit of double cream on top. <laughs> and a bit, oh, I like the old squirty cream on top then. Cheers, mate. No, no that's fine. So see the, with, the, with the full fat. Oh, lovely. Chris is done working his magic. So we're going to. Transfer the new file to the bike. 
and see where we are. Which is probably being to do another one, Chris, wouldn't it? Because it won't be perfect straight off no, the bat, no, will it? It still won't be correct. It'll yeah. be closer, but it still won't be correct. Yeah. Uh, the airbox needs a lot more fuel. Because we've got the uh, DNA airbox. And the other 701, Chris did have a standard airbox. Standard airbox with a wing slip on. Yeah, so it's obviously putting a lot more air through and Greg's. And you need a lot more fuel to compensate. A lot more power. Oh, yes. So just needs a little bit more of a tweak down there. Is that 100% throttle, is it? Is yeah, that, this yeah. is 100% throttle. So, you know, it's not a million miles away. Yeah. Five, six percent on this area here. Yeah. And uh, if we have a look at 50, again, it's not a million miles out there. Yeah, it's just a little bit of a tweak in. Uh, very low throttle opening. Yeah. Pretty much on the money. Yeah. Maybe a small tweak at. Yeah, you know, because that's where just below 2,200. Well, it's like cutting out previously, wasn't it? Yeah, you can see there's a there's a dip in the torque curve just here. Oh, okay. Because this is still lean, so we're yeah, okay. richening this bit up. A little bit more work, and then we're smooth the map in 3D. In the 3D smoothing. So at the moment, this is the this is the the this is what we call the TPS map, because this bike operates on two principles. So it works on a speed density uh, setup under 10% throttle. So it uses uh, a map which is indexed by RPM and map pressure or manifold pressure. And then around maybe seven, eight, nine, ten 10%, it'd jump onto what's known as a TPS map. Uh, this in front of us is, is the TPS map. So we're going to do a bit more work on the TPS map and then we're going to smooth it out. So for instance, uh, you can see that we've added and subtracted uh, quite an assortment of fuel values there. And sometimes you can end up with uh, very big peaks and troughs in the 3D map itself. And if you don't go and view the 3D map afterwards and smooth the 3D map so is this like these troughs here, is it, what you're seeing at the top? Yeah, the well, map the map needs to have a nice shape to it. Yeah. So, I mean, just like that little bit there just needs pulling down ever so slightly. It needs to be uniform. Yeah. Do we need to do a bit more tweaking then? Yeah. yeah. Time for another brew then. <laughs> Look at, it, it? look at the state of this. Transfer complete. So we have the latest modified version of the map on the bike. So Chris is just going to do one more run and then see where we are. But hopefully he's done all the smoothing of the maps. So he's added the extra fuel where needed. So hopefully this could be the last. This could be done. This could be it. That's it. Well done. Job. Nah. Look at that, it's better, isn't it? It's like a 70 horsepower on top then. 69.75. You've got before and after, Chris, if you somewhere there. So remember we needed, there was no point, that was a cold tyre. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That was a cold tyre. Wheel spin. So red is the new one and blue is the, where we came in this morning. Yeah. That's loads more power, isn't it? That's it. So at 4,000 revs then, it was making what? It was originally making 40 horsepower at 4,000. Now it's doing more like 45 at the same. 
the same revs, isn't it? And the same with the torque as well. I'm just going to compare quickly the original 701, which had a stock filter in it, compared to the DNA filter. So it just goes to show because, you know, remember the before and after that we showed just now? Yeah. And that there was a huge gain. Yeah. Uh, and you can see when so we compare the Husky, which had just a slip on, to yours there. So that's, that's the, the Husky is the that's, blue yeah, and the, the red blue, is Greg's. The blue is the tuned Husky with wow, the stock yeah. air box. Yeah. That's amazing, isn't it? They weren't lying about the DNA filter. No, they? they weren't. Look at the difference. Because I expect there would have been a few people looking at the before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and saying, oh, you know, it must be rigged before because that's a hell of a game. Yeah. But you can see it. You know, this is a tuned, blue is a tuned Husky 701. That's the final one you did. Yeah, yeah. Final Jesus. run. Jesus. So if you look against at like, the Rottweiler. So 5,000 revs, he was doing 35 brake horsepower, where it's 46 on Greg's. Jesus. That's amazing. So that airbox makes a hell of a difference. <laughs> Hell of a difference. That's incredible. Well, let's just see what mine's like now with the Rotti kit. So mine's got the Rottweiler airbox, you can see, uh, and the full Tecmo system. And mine, on mine, it's got this little expansion chamber on the header. Whether that does anything, we may see. Lovely. because he's going to be like, well, I can't prove that, yeah. <laughs> Look at that, look. That's flag on, isn't it? Look at that beauty. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hate to say it, but the... Uh, Whoever fitted and mapped that PC5 is, uh, is, is, is good. Well, it's good. It's out of the box, it's, it's, it's great. out of the box, it's not yeah. even... It looks amazing, yeah. I thought it would look really yeah. good. Looks really good, out, straight out, out of the box. Chris, it's 75 horsepower, I think, we spotted through the window. 72. The 72, 72, is it? Yeah. Was there you are. Yeah. Right, yeah. Between the, yeah. right between the 12 and 13 line. Is that full yeah. power run, is it? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty good. There we are. That's, un that's not really, really, that's just so lucky, isn't it? Because it is just a generic map, obviously for that spec, but... I mean, just off the throttle there is a bit shit. So what's that? That's... It's just literally, it's just when you pull away. Right. You, you've, probably, you've probably adjusted to that anyway with the Yeah, yeah I, don't, the I don't notice that, to be fair. Um, ah, wait, we want to bring up Greg's, don't we? Yeah. There we go. Is that them? That so that's that's yours versus Greg's. Oh right, okay. So mine's the blue. Yours is the blue. Mm. Uh, red. Red. Yours is the red. Ah, so mine's down a bit on that. Okay, that's interesting, isn't it? Oh, yours is down. So the mine's down in the between more, three yeah. and five, but or three and five down, and yeah. a half. You've got more grunt than yeah. me, and then mine's top better the at the power. top. Oh, that's yeah, interesting. Yeah. We take away the torque. So yeah. That's just power. Yeah. yeah. Wow, oh, that was what's, good what's, then, isn't it? What's the difference in the mid range and about? And what's the difference there? Let me click on that 42, 42 versus so 38. Four, four horsepower in the mid range. Well. You've um, got another four at the top. I've got 72, 72.3 at the top, where's your yeah. 67? Five more. I'm surprised, I thought, I thought mine would be more stronger in the, the mid. The mid. Well, they've both got different exhaust pipes that's on. Right. Well, that's true, maybe so, mine is tuned more for top, for top end. end yeah. Different shape and size yeah. on the exhaust, different diameter yeah, pipe right. as well. That's it, it's a different exhaust system, yeah. So mine has and, got that. Uh, Acropro Vic are known for being 
the business. It's not worth you touching it, Chris, is it, to be honest? It just, it's a lot of work for you to try and get the same... Yeah, we could we could match it. We could maybe, match it. Maybe exceed it by a horsepower, maybe. But it's, it'll mean or, another three hours um, worth of your effort. Yeah. yeah, no, it's... That's it. Yeah. Well, I, I basically wanted to know it was running... It's running good. Safely, or it's running just... But, you know, it's, yeah, it is running good. Yeah. Oh, we'll leave it at that then, mate. <laughs> Excellent, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly, mate. That's what you want to do. You do who, really? There we go. Well, there is no point doing anything, is there? there there's, there, there's no point chasing something, chasing something that's, that's good anyway. Yeah, exactly. If you wanted to get rid of the power commander, then you could then you do could. the ECU, yeah, yeah, but exactly. it's just, it's just yeah. no point if you're happy yeah. with it the way it yeah, is. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy with that. From man. a fueling point of view, it's perfect. As long as I know it's running as optimal as it can be, and it, yeah. more, it is really, isn't it? Like you yeah. say, you, can, you might be able to prove it a tiny amount, but. The effort to do that is, it's not worth it. We'll let, we'll let you go home instead. Oh, thanks, John. <laughs> thanks, man. Yeah. Amazing. But you've got way more grunt than me. So in, in some respect, yours is better because you're what the grunt. This is what you want with a yeah. Moto, to be fair, isn't it? You want as much so, space, really, don't you? Yeah. Man? So track riding on That's the track, that would be better because I've got a bit more at the top. Right. But for real world road riding, yours is probably... Yours is not exactly lacking in front of anything. You've been all over me until I mind that. It's yeah. been terrible. Yeah. It's been absolutely awful. I can't yours is going to be an animal then, the bottom end. No, if yours is, <laughs> this is an animal, yours is going to be even more. Because <laughs> technically, <laughs> have both bikes got the same air box? No, because Greg's got just the... Greg's got the stock air box, but just with the different filter that plugs in. This is a whole air box replacement on it. Oh, I see. So it should okay. really be more air. Ah, so this is a like a pod filter arrangement. This is a pod filter okay, arrangement, with a, yeah. which shortens the intake track length. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, this has got a different um, Venturi than yeah. standard as well. So that could be why the That's top exactly end. That's exactly why you've got the top end hit there. Yeah, there you go. It makes sense then. And, and maybe lacking a little bit in the mid yeah. because of that as well. Can we pull this off to have a look? It unclips that. If you want to get sticky, yeah, yeah you loosen that one yeah, and, then that, and then it should. Hold that a sec, Greg. Yeah, that one just sort of unhooks, doesn't it? And then I think it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Like that. Look at that. Lovely. So on your bike, you've got the stock Venturi and intake on yours. Correct. And then you just okay. take, I've taken the lid off and it replaces it with that sort of open air filter. There you go, then. Excellent. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It definitely changes the power characteristics yeah. a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Shape and size of the exhaust, shape and size of the intake. Yeah. yeah. Tune for torque, tune for top end. I'm well happy. We're all yeah. happy. Yeah. <laughs> so there we go. We can relax now. We can relax. Tea now. Yeah, exactly, mate. Yeah. It's so good, the coffee in here. It's good, isn't it? It just, just sits the spot, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. We've just spent, um, so we've been doing about two hours riding back in the worst conditions possible, with it wet, cold, dark, dark. Couldn't, couldn't see nothing. So initially, what do you think of the bike, Rick? How's it been? Very hard to tell because of the conditions, the obviously. The conditions are terrible. Yeah. But what I can say is the pickup from the bottom and that sort of mid range, it's transformed it. And I'm riding delicately now because it is drenched outside, but it's like a different bike. I mean, there's no, there's no it sounds different. The throttle response amazing. Just pulling away from standstill at junctions. Before, you if you didn't slip the clutch for ages, it would just want to die. Whereas now it's just completely smooth. It's yeah, it's transformed it. Absolutely, I'm delighted to be honest. He's a happy bunny. Yes, very happy. So I think we'll call that a big fat success. So I didn't map mine, obviously, as you saw. So you didn't need it. <laughs> so <laughs> quite happy with that, really. So. It's a cheap day out for me and Greg's got his bike sorted, so can't thank Chris enough. If you've got a Euro 5, 701 or 690, it's £399 for Chris to map uh, the Euro 5 machines and £299 for the Euro 4. So uh, if you want it doing, CGS Racing, I'll put links to Chris in the description below. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching and we'll uh, see you on the next one. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Cheers.